when you really need to film your September slash October wrap up because they just come late and at this point do you really care if it's late as long as it goes up right so please don't fall to be continued hello hello and welcome back to my channel I am here with a very late September slash October wrap up because I like to combine them for when I do my Halloween reading around that time. So I figured why not and do a quick wrap up for what I read for both months because I was getting into the spooky season because it is my favorite along with Christmas but... Let's get in to this wrap up so we can find out what books I read each month. Alright, now for the month of September, I read a total of nine books. I can't hold up my fingers and do that. Alright, cool. So, let's get into the nine books that I read. I did do a review for one that I read in September that I ended up DNFing at 270 pages, which was The Thirteen Nights of Midnight. Like I said in that video, I tried my best to get into it. It was good and up until the 100 page mark and then like from there it just felt like flat for me. And I was really sad because I really wanted to read it because it was about this kid who had just lost his father and his father could see these ghosts and he was very bad at like controlling them apparently for the reason why he had left Luke's mom and Luke and it's just like, oh, but poor kid. I felt bad for him on that part. But like from there, like the ghost and they trying to control Luke. It was all over the place. Like I said, I really, really wanted to like it because I like stuff like that. But the writing. The writing was okay. It just wasn't my favorite thing ever. So, like I said, I DNF'd a book. Which doesn't happen often. But in this certain case, it does. So, we're going to move on for that, and like I said, I do have a video about it, talking about it a little bit before I gave it away, so there's that. Alright, what I am going to be talking about is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare, and this is the second book in the Dark Artifice series, and oh my god. A lot of things happened in this book. Like, a lot. And if you haven't read the series yet, scamper off. Bye-bye. Come back when you've read it because... Spoil, spoil, spoil. Oh, that ending, though? What happens to Ty's twin sister? I I'm still shaking. I need to read the third book to find out what all happened and how Ty is dealing with that and the fact that Kit was right there and he didn't want to leave his side is like oh my god precious just very precious <laughs> that is all I have to say and then what happens between Emma and Julian and Julian finding out that she's not technically with Mark it was just to keep Julian away but does it keep him away um, no, because your heart wants what your heart wants. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry I said it like that. But overall, oh, my Blackthorn family, I need to know what happens more to these precious children. Quit hurting them, please. I'm scared for the third book. I'm scared. But looking forward to finishing and with it, it's just, 
I don't know if my heart can handle it anymore, but we're definitely going to try. Alright, and then from there, I finally, whoa, I cannot get a hold of these books. I read This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab, and then I finished it off with Our Dark Duet, like, kind of right after. And all I have to say is I loved the two main characters in both these books. I like Kate and August. I had to remember what their names were because it's been a little bit. But I loved them, like I said, in the beginning of this one. They were like trying to find out exactly where they wanted to fit in into the world and where they wanted to be. And August was didn't really want to be a monster. He didn't want to be like a bad monster. He wanted to be a good monster and like help people from the bad monsters. And I loved that about him. And just like, ugh. And the ending of this when he lost his brother. Sorry, spoiler alert, if you haven't read these books, go away. Bye. Come back when you've read them because I'm about to drop some stuff. Anyway, <laughs> I just, I really loved them. It's so precious. And then the second one. Oh, don't even get me started. Well, you can, but let's see if I can finish. So, in this one, Kate moves away. She goes to a different country and then helps these group of people to find the monsters. To kind of, like, try to fight them off or whatever it is that they decided that they were going to do. And she goes back to her hometown. Which was her mistake. Because after her father dies in the first one, and then she thought this bad guy that wanted to kill her, died. Well, we all know in movies and in some books, does the villain ever really truly die? No, they come back for life because they want a round two. They always want a round two, or they always have a partner. Those are the things that happen usually in books and usually in movies so why she thought that was possible I have no idea but the very end was bittersweet because she was ready to move on to be with her mom oh broke my heart broke August's heart as well because he really liked Kate and if she would have lived I think they would have made a cute couple, but that's just my opinion. And also, in the second book, August isn't the same August that's in the first one. I mean, sort of, but he's changed a lot. He's more of a Leo than he is himself. And that's a little scary, because nobody really likes Leo. But they did like August because he was different and he was into music and he loved his violin and he couldn't go anywhere without that thing. Which, yes, play that violin, August. Play it. I will not get over that. Sorry, but not sorry. But overall, I really enjoyed both of these books. So if you haven't read either one... Where have you been? Please, please pick them up because I enjoyed them so much that I think I'll probably do a reread next year. That might be my plan. That might not be my plan. Do we know? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it happens. And then, I finally got around to reading A Gathering of Shadows also. By V.E. Schwab. I did say this year was going to be a V.E. Schwab year. Did I lie? No, I did not. Because I read quite a few of V.E. Schwab books. And I'm pretty proud. I haven't gotten to the third one yet. But soon. Very, very soon. Alright. the one, This one. Lila Bard. She's definitely a character, and Kel, and the prince, why can't I remember his name? Right. Why can I- Wow. 
I know it's been a while since I've read them, but maybe I need to do a reread of this one too. But from what I can recall, Rai, he doesn't make the smartest decisions of him being princeling. Like, he wants to get away with stuff, and Kel's always right there, you know, saying, if you do badly, it will reflect off on me. Like, if you're hungover, I'll be hungover, even though I haven't really drank, kind of, because he bounded his life to Rai to save him. And it's just, oh, and the middle part, like, where his keen threw him into a stellar kind of thing, and, like, he, like, disappears from there. Like, what is up with that? And the fact that Lila wants to go and find where... Kel had disappeared too because mm -hmm, I think she wants to get with Kel. I have, like I said, I haven't read the third book, so I don't know what's gonna happen. I need my answers soon, and I don't want to give too much away into this one, like I do the other books. But Lila Bard, she is her own person. She doesn't take shit from nobody not even the pirate guy that she stores away onto the ship and wants to blend in even though she doesn't know their language but she does her very well best because she is Delilah Bard which I love <laughs> she is oh awesome like one of my favorite book characters uh, anyway, that is all I have to say for about A Gathering of Shadows, and if you haven't read it yet, what are you doing? Please pick this series up to a darker shade of magic. You won't regret it. No. My finger popped. Ah. Alright, we are going to move on to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This one I also, well I listen to it on audio, I listen to most of these on audio. Not all of them, but quite a few of them to get down with them. But I really enjoyed listening to Monty, I was trying to think of the kid's name, wow. He should have done these videos sooner, but if, we're doing it now. Anyway, I loved reading about Monty and then his crush on Percy and then his sister, Lala, what's his sister's name? Wow, I do not remember his sister's name. She was one of the, she was a side character, but she gets her own book in the next sequel. But she, I'm still trying to find out what Percy or Percy, what Monty's sister's name is. What's the name? What's the name? Say it, say it. Say it loud, whatever. What's it? What's it? Say it, say it. Felicity! Wow. Okay! <laughs> Felicity, she wants to be a doctor, and then when Monty and Persky kind of get hurt, she's there to, like, patch them up. But they store away on this little adventure, and later does Monty find out that Persky is sick, and Monty wants nothing better to do than try to help his number one love, his crush, she wants to keep him alive as long as possible, even though if there's a curse, or not a curse, like a cure, Monty wants to find it to help Persky with it, even though at this rate, Persky is ready to go on with his life, but it, it's just so bittersweet, it was such a fun ride, and I just, I really enjoyed it so much, you know, it took me a while to figure out what Monty's sister's name was, forgive me, but it was just, it was fun, it was like pirates, so it was stored away on a cruise ship, and then 
runaways, even though they're not runaways, they just wanted to have a fun adventure, even though they got attacked because Monty w stole something that didn't belong to him, and then that person was coming back after them to get that fact back. <laughs> oh, Monty. He was a badass who didn't really care about nothing but himself, or so it seemed that way in the beginning. But he changes course the end, of course. Because that's how we do in some books. We change, we grow. And it, like I said, it was a fun ride. I really enjoyed it. I need to get to the second one very, very soon. So there's that. Alright, the next book I read, slashed, listened to, was The Last Magician by... Lisa Maxwell. This was a fun time traveling book. It started off in the beginning and Esta is a talent. She is the very talented thief and she had to go back and get something for her boss. Later did she find out that her boss is the bad guy that she wanted that she needed to get this fact back from him from the past. And she found out later on that she shouldn't be giving that to him, and he wanted her to. And it, it was all over, but it was a fun all over, if you're catching my drift here. And she meets the magician, and she kind of, like, wants to fall in love with the magician. Like, mm -hmm. uh... <laughs> Anyway, I really enjoyed reading Esta, and like I said, I love the little time traveling thing. Her boss, oh, he was so cruel to her. And like, I can't remember his name either. All I know is that he was mean, and he didn't deserve the little artifact that he was after because he wanted to change some things in the world. And the way he wanted to do it was very cruel and evil. And so there's that. So after she still has the artifact, she goes back into the past to go back to find the magician. So she doesn't run into her boss when he was younger. It's mind blown. But overall, like I said, this also was definitely a very fun ride for me. And I can't wait to continue with the series, series, ah, the next book very, very soon. That's what I'm saying to most of these, but it'll be very soon, like maybe in January in 2020. Look out, world! Alright, moving on. I reread It for the second time, and I still, I love these kids so much. Their language, though, mmm. Could care less for that. There's, especially for how they treat some of the people of color. I didn't really like that fact about this book, but I did like the people that were in it. I didn't really like the bullies. <laughs> they were mean. They were cruel. They were awful. And when Pennywise came around to the bullies. I, I like the fact that he got some of them, but the ones that he left to get the kids, uh, no, you need to go somewhere else, clown. Like, bye. Okay? Bye. Pennywise, he was definitely one of the weirdest villains I have ever read slash watched in my life. When I first watched this, terrified me as a kid. Because I was like in middle school when I had seen it. <laughs> eh, mm -hmm. But anyway, I like I said, I really enjoyed reading about the kids and their group coming together and them trying to stand strong to fight this evil Pennywise clown. And it's just... Bye-bye, mm, Pennywise! Um... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> The one kid in here that I kind of liked, but kind of found a, l a little bit annoying, was Richie. I'm sorry if he's your favorite. I'm really, really sorry. It's just... 
I don't know if it was because of the voices that he did. That c probably could have been mostly it. But, uh, I didn't love him. I really wanted to like all of them. But out of all of the kids, out of Billy, Richie, uh, Eddie, Mike, Ben, Beverly, Richie was my least favorite character out of all of them. Well, and Henry, but nobody really likes Henry. I don't think. But anyway, I don't really need to give, like I said, a much description about it. It's just about a killer clown that keeps coming back, like, every 27 years, and it lurks, and it goes after little kids, because the adults don't really believe it then, unless they were little kids, and then it comes back and haunts them as adults. That's the only reason when the adults will see Pennywise. Otherwise, you don't see this clown coming towards you. <clears throat> uh, I don't know where that came from. Anyway, like I said, I really did enjoy the book a lot better than the original It movie, which was kind of surprising that when I did read it last year and reread it this year, like, yeah, I, I still like it. But like I said, some of the words and some of the language that could have been toned down a lot. But overall, I really liked it. Obviously, because I have two different copies. This is the first copy I have, but it doesn't have the clown on the si on the side. So there's that. All right, so those were the nine books that I read in September. Now we're going to move into October where I also read a total of nine books as well and I DNF'd one book and I didn't like another book I should have DNF'd it too but I wanted to finish it and get it off of my TBR list and so I did I don't have either one of them so the pictures are going to have to do If I can learn to type ifs and spell. Please hold while I try to figure this out. Alright, the first book I'm going to be talking about is The Valiant by Leslie Livingston. I'm going to pull up the picture here. Oh, hello. Oh, you're not going to do it? That's cool. But that is this book here. I really wanted to like it because it was a she's a warrior princess. It was kind of like Wonder Woman, but she but Fallon, she gets kicked off of her island. She goes and works for a slave king and he doesn't know that she's a princess. But while she's there, she runs from some runs into someone from her past who she thought was dead, but was not truly dead. And I thought that 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 part was interesting, and I liked it. Oh, I liked that part, but it it fell flat for me. And like I said, I I just couldn't get into it. I really wanted to, cause like the vibe sounded right up my alley. But, I just couldn't do it anymore. And then the next book I'm going to be talking about is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Which is not going to pull up, but that's cool. But I read part of, like I said, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Season of the Witch. I ended up DNFing it at 172 pages. I liked the TV show more than I liked the book. It had some pages that were like, like decked out black with white writing and every time I would get to them, it kind of made it hard to read that section and when I did get to it, 
I found it boring and it was kind of lacking for me so that's the only reason why I did not finish that. It was fun in the beginning but like towards like that after the hundred page mark I was like I can't do this no more. It's not fun so I set it aside and said that's it that I can't. Like I said the show is way better than the book. I don't know about the comic book. I might try that version maybe later on because that might be it for me. But the actual book? Maybe the audiobook might be better. We'll see. But I just mm, couldn't. Alright, the next one I'm really excited to talk about again. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I do have a, a video out for this and it's one of my favorite books of the year. It's one of them. I'm going to make a video for that later on and I'm excited but I'm going to wait until after November and December to put that video out so we know if I have any more favorites between now and then when I make the video at the end of December but we're back with the woman in the window <laughs> Anna Fox is not your typical regular adult she lives alone but she has a handy man who lives down in the basement who comes up every now and again to fix like her light fixtures and like stuff that she has broken going on there and he's there to fix it like that when she needs it and then she has new neighbors who move across the hall from her and she is nosy as heck and she has a little video camera and she spies on these new people through her camera lens and Anna what you doing, my friend? That's a no, no, no. And a little weird, weird, weird. But it gives her a kind of a hobby to do. Because, she, like I said, she's living alone. Her Something terrible happens to her, her ex-husband and her daughter. But the weird sneaky twist is she thinks that they're still there with her because she's still traumatized about what happened to them. Oh, and if you haven't read this book, please do, because the way she describes on what happens to them and how she became traumatized and she can't leave her house, kind of, because of that issue, and she, she's got a lot of issues going on for her, and one of them is, like, an anxiety, and she takes medicine because she has another disorder going on and she also has problem with drinking and uh, she likes to take her pills with her gulp 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 thing and that part's really really bad because it can mess you up and poor poor Anna but like I said she's has these news neighbors that move across the hall from her. She sees something that she wasn't really supposed to see, but she didn't see who done did it. But when we find out who done did it, who killed this woman who she thought was her friend, and the lady didn't, wasn't exactly who she said she was because she wasn't supposed to be in that situation, but the person that killed her, oh, he was a piece of work, let me tell ya. Because you think he, he's a sweet, shy, innocent little person, but deep down he had a very dark secret and uh, he did this stabby stabby thing and it was just like, whoa, was not expecting that turn out. But this was definitely a thrill, thriller ride and I was here obviously for every minute of it because Need a quick drink. <sighs> Better. <clears throat> Alright, this next book I'm super excited to talk about. Well, I'm super excited about most of these books. But that is The Wicked Keen by Holly Black. 
This is the second one to the Cruel Prince, and just like a lot goes down in this one, especially towards the ending. The ending is like jam packed with all lots, and for the sec for the second for the third book coming out this month in November. Oh, your girl needs answers. She needs to know what happens to the cruel, or well, to the Wicked King. He's no longer the cruel prince. He's the Wicked King now, and that name is well deserved for Cardian because that is exactly what he is. He's wicked. He's cruel. He's evil. He's all the things above. And the way that he treats Jude is just, ugh, it's awful. But to be fair, she kind of treats him the same way because he was a wicked to her. She, she tries so hard in this book to be like his number one person to like, for like when small events happen, like he has to tell her first before they can tell anyone else that goes on, but <laughs> that didn't happen. And then at this one part, they have this like one little small hookup, and that is what I'm calling it, it's a hookup, and then like after that, they're like, back to hating each other. It's like, ugh. Why? Why you gotta go and do me dirty like that? Like, why? It's, I like this series so much. I can't wait for Queen of Nothing. Fun little small fact about that. That happens at the end of this book. So, um, if you haven't read this book and you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, like I keep saying, bye bye skip her off. See you when you read it. But, uh, Cardian wants to marry Jude. And then, like, after all that happens and after she, like, kills his brother and, like, all this political things happen. Um, excuse me, what's going on? He marries her? Yeah. But not in front of any witnesses, so her word is against his in a way because he's trying to say oh yeah you are my queen but at the same time I'm gonna banish you into the mortal world you can never set foot in fey land ever again then what was the point of making her your queen I do not understand like why guardian why her Jude she didn't do much to you she made you possible to be this keen and you're this wicked one. Control yourself. Um, <clears throat> we're fine. <clears throat> we're fine. I think. Uh, this is a fun video, isn't it? All right. Thing next up, I'm gonna talk about is definitely another favorite of mine. And that is Servant and Dove by Shelby Maher. And now, this book is either a hit or a miss for some people. This was definitely a hit for me. I cannot wait for book two that comes out next year. And of course, if you haven't already know, I painted my edges to this one. And I most likely will be painting my edges to Blood and Honey which is the sequel to Servant and Dove, but let's get into Servant and Dove, because you have your two main characters, Louise and Reed. Louise is a witch that has escaped her coven, but she has a very good reasons why she escaped. A, she's running away from her mother who's trying to kill her, and B, her coven wants her dead so they can create this so typical new world thing where her mother takes over and everyone's like against each other like she Louise is the one no part of that and she's this badass and she doesn't care about what anyone thinks about her and I love that about her like yes strong female character who doesn't give a shit um <clears throat> She really doesn't. And then she meets Reed, who is a witch 
hunter who runs into Louise, but doesn't know she's a witch and towards like the middle of the book. And when he finds out, he's not sure if he still wants to continue loving her or if he wants to stake her like he's learned to do. And thank God he, he does not, obviously, but... <sighs> I just love them together. They're so precious. And, ah, uh, the cute little romancy parts between them that we get. I just want more of them. They're funny together. Like I said, she doesn't give a crap about what people think about her. And then you have this poor, innocent, innocent Reed who's only ever had one crush in his entire life. And then he gets married to a witch, but doesn't know she's a witch. But... Oh, he wants to care for her, he wants to love her, and like when he finally gives in, that's when he finds out, huh, oh, surprise, I'm a witch, but I'm a good witch, I don't want to hurt you kind of witch, and I love that, it's just, uh, it had all the, it had all the feels for me, like I said, it's not for most people, because like I said, it was either a hit or a miss with some people, and like I said, obviously it was definitely a hit. And just, oh, I need more of Louise and Reed. Uh, books who cannot get here fast enough, you guys. Just, like, I need it. And we're going to have to move on. Don't want to. I could talk forever about this book, but my precious book is going to go right there. Alright, the next book I want to talk about is This Lie Will Kill You by Chelsea Pitcher. And this book it's like clue me to Riverdale and that alone uh yeah it's tech also about like a dinner mystery party and who these five group of these five kids go into this party because they think they're getting like a scholarship but that isn't exactly what throws down they're trying to figure out, out what happened to this kid like one year ago because they all went to this party and a kid died. And they're trying to figure out who killed him and why they killed him. So a year later, they like I said, they throw this mystery dinner party who says, oh, it's going to be like a college fund money thing for you after you figure it out these clue things. It's sort of like that, but it's not like that, so it was definitely quite a ride, and it was really good. Like I said, it's like Clue meets Riverdale, and if you like both of those things, I think you will definitely like This Lie Will Kill You. It will keep you on the edge of the seat to figure out oh, who really killed this person, and why did they kill that person it was an act of jealousy, maybe? You're going to have to read the book to find out what exactly went down, but a lot went down that night. Like, a lot. Alright. The other book we're going to talk about is A Muse of Nightmares by Lanny Taylor. I finally got to it. And more stuff happened between Lazlo and Sarai. I think that's how you say her name. I'm still trying to process it. But. Oh, and Minya. Oh, Minya. She is a stubborn little girl who doesn't want Sarai to do much with Laszlo, even though he's trying to figure out what all he can do and why he is now blue and what his special powers are. And just, ah! And then you have Sarai's dad, who's this big, bad, god, evil slayer, and he wants to get to know his daughter more, and just like a lot of stuff go down in this book. And it's just like, at the end, it's just so, it's so precious and it's so sweet. Ah, Earl Fane and his wife. We don't know what that was, but, like, their moments, 
that he wants to try to recreate because he wasn't fond of it like the first go around. <laughs> I'm like freaking out. Ah. Ah, and Lazo to find out that Minya is his sister and she's a stubborn one at that. Uh -huh. And then you got Ruby and Feral. <laughs> Poor Feral. He's not sure if he's really into the whole love thing, but he kind of gets a little jealous a little bit the things that Ruby says towards him, but <laughs> it's Ruby. How can you not? And then... Oh, what's the other girl's name? The one that can bring people back. I can't remember her name. Help me. Why can't I honestly remember this other girl's name? I know it's been a little while, but still. Sparrow. I'm ashamed. Same. Anyway, like I said, Spiral can... Not only can she bring plants to life, like to bloom, she figured out that she has another power that she's allowed and able to do. I don't know what we're doing here. But <laughs> she found out she can do more with her power, and that's just... <laughs> Sorry if that was a spoiler alert, but, uh, you knew it when you clicked on the video. But please stay. Please stay. Please don't go away. Come back. Come back. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, <laughs> overall, it was really special, and I just, I love this world so much, and Lazo, my precious little baby, uh, <laughs> and then, like, Sarari's dad and, and his wife. Should I say the moment? <clears throat> they have a child, and they named him Lazlo. <laughs> yeah, they did. I just found that moment very sweet, and when I heard that, when I was listening to it, I was like, what? <sighs> I was very shocked, but uh, it was bittersweet, so I loved it, so... <laughs> Please read Strange to Dreamer and Amuse of Nightmares. It's, they're both very fun. And I love them. Minya. She needs to chill down with, like, her, like, her ghost stuff. But, like, um, and her army arising. And she just needs to chill. Chill, Minya. Chill. Alright, so the next cute little book I'm going to be talking about is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell, and it is a cute little graphic novel about these two kids who work, of course, in a pumpkin patch, and it's their last year before they go off to college, and Joeza really wants to talk to his crush. I'm not sure if that's how you say his name correctly, but I'm sorry. We're going to call him Josh because it, it has that in there, but... Him and his best friend, Deja, are going to try to find this girl so he can finally talk to her about how he's wanting to try to say, oh, I've had a crush on you ever since we started this job, but I'm too scared to come out and tell you, and they go on this little adventure to try to find this girl when they're supposed to be working, but they're not working, and also on this journey, she, DJ, I think that's how you say her name, I'm sorry if it's not, but she wants to go and try every little snack that is at this pumpkin patch and just like, yes, that would so be me. Like, I want to try and like get every little snack you can and there's, look at all of that that is going on and at that pumpkin patch. Like, I want to try to find something like that. Like, they have a s'mores pit, they have a petting zoo, they have a fudge shop, uh, chicken races, uh, 
the hay rack ride, which you can find those. Pumpkin fields, you can find those. But there's like a pumpkin drop, a kettle corn, um, a pumpkin bob stand, a haunted house thing, pony go around. Just like a lot happening at this pumpkin patch. And it's just like, it's awesome. It's amazing. Like, I. It was such a fun and quick and easy read. So if you guys are looking for something next year to read that's small and short and bitter and sweet, definitely check out Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Route. You won't regret it. At least, no, I hope you won't. Alright, the last book I'm going to talk about real quick before my battery dies, and which I really hope you don't. Please don't. But it is City of Ghosts, also by one and only V.E. Schwab. A. This is about a girl named Cassidy who can see into uh, what they call like the sight, like the shield or the shield of field or whatever you, yeah, the veal. And she has a best friend, but her best friend that she has is a ghost. And the only person that can see him is Cassidy. And she thought she was alone. She thought she was the only person that was like her who can see ghosts into the second sight. And when she finds out she's not, she wants to learn more about that and more about into her power and why she can see it. But she also almost drowned. But when she did drown, she kind of died. But she came back and she was saved by her ghost friend, Jacob. And their friendship is just, it's incredible, it's cute, it's sweet, I love it. And her family is also down to hunting ghosts because they're on a haunted TV show. And Cassie comes along for the ride, but little did they know that their daughter can see ghosts and what they're looking for. Ironic, right? But... I love it, and it's also a middle grade book, and it's not too scary for younger kids, so definitely pick it up if you think it sounds good, and it just scratched me in the side of the face. The heck? These books are attacking me. <laughs> Alright. Ow! I'm okay. I think. Anyway, that was my September slash October wrap up and if any of them sound good I would highly recommend them all except for the ones that I didn't but if you want to check them out go ahead and definitely do that but if you're new here go ahead and hit that subscribe <coughs> that was way off key <laughs> but yes definitely hit the subscribe and hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss further videos from me Anyway, I will see you guys in my next one very, very soon, and that is all I have for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if this was definitely a fun ride for you. I would love to know, and if you made it through the video, drop definitely a blue heart because blue is one of my favorite colors. Either drop that or make it fun. Drop a pumpkin head if you watched the whole thing. That would be awesome, and I would definitely love that. And, yeah, like I said, I will see you guys in my next video, and there you have it. Bye, guys.